Hi, I'm Iris, and welcome back to another episode of Shadows Over Loathing, where we're gonna go... I don't know where we're going. Um, let's go to the dolphin house. Distant frog sounds become less different frog sounds as you find yourself very close to a lot of frogs. Frog bog? I want to go to the frog bog. We'll keep going where we're going. The old dolphin house. Another one of those Gatorman campsites. Maybe the ones who kidnapped Charles came this way? It's another Gatorman camp, alright. And there's four more wrenches here. Uh, 31, 32, this one. 30, 63 out of 64, one. Uh, 27, 128, one. And a 255 out of 256, one. Charles must carry one heck of a toolbox. The wrenches are laid out in the shape of an arrow, pointing towards a nearby hill. From the top of the hill, you can see that there's some kind of fort in the distance, apparently hammered together out of rusty scrap metal. That's gotta be where the Gatorman took him. Location lock, Gatorman Fortress. We grab all the wrenches and combine with the other ones he dropped to complete the set. We got Charles's wrench set. Cool. This tree has a hole in it. Conveniently, the hole is slightly larger than your hand. Honestly, for what is ostensibly a horror game, we have a few opportunities for you to stick your hand into a suspicious dark hole. Reach in! You reach inside the dark hole. It's damp and ominous, and then. Aye! You find a key. Sorry, that key wasn't really justified. We got a dolphin padlock key. Mossy. This key is returning to the earth for whence it came. I look. Looks like this car was left to rot. Unfortunately, it hasn't yet rot enough for you to get past the locked door. Demi it open. You unlock the car. Destroying the hang in the process. You search the car. It's empty except for the glove box, which turns out to actually be a key box. The key inside is not the key to this car. And if you have a sense of humor like mine, you'll agree this is a real shame. We got the dolphin padlock key tarnished. It must have been pretty human inside that glove box. This door is padlocked. Unlock it. Click. You pop the lock up in the door and latches with an ominous creak. We got a recovered padlock. Enter the garage. These cinder blocks are totally waterlogged. Wait a second. One of the boxes ha blocks has a telltale glow of mana moss infestation. He drained the moss of his glowing juices. Yay. Some say the most powerful tool is a padlock. It's really more the opposite of a tool, though, because it obstructs rather than facilitates what you're trying to do. Old Dauphin never got sick of tires. Ooh, a workbench cover tools. All rest past the point of usefulness, even as bludgeons. Damn it. The front door of Dauphin Manor is unlocked. Apparently, Mr. Dauphin's love of padlocks was unrelated to basic home security. Fansworth Dauphin, die of natural causes. Goldilocks? Wait. What about the door? Beasley Dauphin, die of natural causes. Hortense Dauphin, natural causes. Mopey Dauphin, die of natural causes. Calverna Dauphin, natural causes. Oh god. Uh, ooh, bathroom. This medicine, medicine cabinet is securely locked. Maybe it's full of deadly poisons. The Dauphin needs a toilet, one toilet at a time, just like the rest of us. Hmm, it doesn't work. Maybe something's wrong in the tank. Check it out. Well, there's your problem. There's a key stuck to the v v float valve hinge flange. We got a dolphin padlock key. Wet. This bathtub is full of steaming blood. Oh no, wait. The red is just light coming through a stained glass rose hanging in the bathroom window. That doesn't really explain why the water's still hot, though. Fish. After a brief struggle, you reel something in. Extra meat on the line. He caught something. Soggy is bandaged and a cigarette tangled in the line. What the hell did we use the cigarettes for? He looks like the kind of thing that was in here. Damn it. What about the Goldilocks one? Die natural causes? Okay. This couch faces the wall. It must have been the Dauphin's family's punishment couch. This door is padlocked. Unlock it. Ooh, hello, radio. Fancy store bought radio. You turn the radio WGCR and hold it up. The thing is up to nine. A fancy serving cart. It's one of those serving carts they use in posh hotels and in posh manor houses, apparently. The big silver platter covered with a dome shaped lid. Just the right size to hide a severed head or a roast of some kind. Look under the dome. You cautiously reach out and grip the handle, then take a deep breath. Slowly, you lift the lid, tilting your head to peek underneath. Oh. It's empty. Oh well. It's just empty, okay. 
Enough tri fine china to defeat an army. If only you could get past the padlock, and if you were in command of the world's hoity toitiest military. No padlocks on the dinner table. That's both a rule and an observation. A clean and well lighted corner. Okay, what's the second door? The padlock door. I guess we're going in here. Click, we got a recovered padlock. What a strange thing to collect. Go through the door. Oh, second floor. Some dirt in a planter where presumably a plant a planter once stood. What's this? No. Nope. This door's padlocked. This door's padlocked. Stereo. Okay. We might have to look in the other doors because there was a door by one. The basement of the swamp house is predictably completely flooded. You'll need some kind of breathing apparatus if you want to go down there. Do we have a breathing apparatus? We have a gas mask. We have a Maklava. Oh, if we try this. Nope, okay. Then we might find it in this quest that we're doing. Oh, kitchen. In Pepperidge, Pepperidge's father's house, there are many drawers. What about the sink? Nice, we caught a chunk of gristle. Chunk of gristle? It caught something. Chunk oh, it's just a chunk of gristle again. Let's rifle through these drawers. Lots of stuff here. We got a dire corn holder. A regular corn holder is a tiny vampire that drinks corn cob juice instead of blood. A dire one also drinks blood. It's, it's rivets, match. Ooh, and one of the padlocks. Covered padlock. Woohoo. This oven is full of gross, steamy swamp worms. Ugh. And those old fridges that people sometimes got locked to and accidentally and officiated. Oh, wait. That's still all fridges these days. Maybe that's why it's padlocked. Look. We got a covered padlock. The fridge is empty of both expired food and expired hide and seekers. You do find a key inexplicably frozen to a block of ice, though. We got a key and a block of ice. You can't tell if this was done as a prank or by someone trying to break the habit of fidgeting with their keys. The humidity has turned most of these dry goods into stale goods. See if there's anything good left. Almost nothing has escaped the moisture. Almost. We got a can of fruit cocktail. A variety of chopped fruit floating in syrup. If modern technology has produced anything better about this, I don't want to hear it. Hear about it. I probably won't because hearing aids haven't been invented yet as far as I know. Unfortunately, breakfast has not been served. Can we put... What do we do with the block of ice? It's a quest time, apparently. Let's go to the second floor. Don't we have... Oh. Bedroom. This, the toy box is disappointingly empty. Not even a BB gun or a creepy doll. Maybe the doll's hiding somewhere. This nightstand has one empty drawer and one locked drawer. An eerie, ghostly sound is coming from inside it. A comfortable looking bed, free of blood stains or vaguely person shaped lumps under the blanket, tucked under the pillow. Ooh, look, shiny. Somebody must have traded in a key shaped tooth. We got a pillow key. It's shiny. Someone has really gone after this key with a key polish. Wardrobes were very important in old houses like this that didn't have built in closets to keep skeletons in. You relieve the furniture of its contents. Not about your skeletal, unless you count the coat hanger. Work pants and wire coat hanger. A shelf full of books about sports. The tiles are all too boring for me to even tell you what they are. Nothing's hiding underneath the bed except dust. Okay, we can't open this. Okay. Can we open this one? This door is padlocked. This door is padlocked. We can unlock it. Woohoo. Go through the door. Hello. It's a fancy vanity, which appeals to your pedestrian vanity. Look through the drawers. There's some leftover makeup in one of the drawers. We got radium rouge. The convenient thing about products with radi radium in them is that they're easy to find. In the darkness of the coffin, they'll ultimately put you in. <laughs> oh my god. Have y'all seen that Reddit story where it's like this girl is living with like a roommate and the fucking roommate has like shit tons of radiation that should not be, um, <laughs> you should not be exposed to whatsoever. Luckily, she got the hell out of there. Um, I, I don't know what happened to the guy, but it's fucking terrifying. <laughs> There's a little jewelry box on this table. 
It contains, to your non-surprise, jewelry. Perfectly normal jewelry. Hamethyst arm bent plus nine to maximum HP. Jesus. Ring of Universal Health Healthcare. Ooh, forged by socialist dwar dwarves in the heart of an employee-owned mountain. Medical Manchigo heals the entire party. Ooh, that's nice. A fancy nightstand. The fancy nightstand's contents are disappointingly non-fancy. Junk mail battery, disappointing. Huh? Key, you were hoping this key would be much fancier. The bed looks inviting, but no one seems to have accepted the invitation for quite some time. The cedar chest is locked, and easily big enough to hide a skeleton, or even a whole body. Okay, can we unlock this one? Okay. Hello. This workbench is strewn with bits and gizmos, and bits of gizmos. Amongst all that, you find what looks like a miniature radio car from Driftwood. A radio small enough to carry? Amazing! Maybe if you listen to it periodically, it'll warn you about any nearby monsters that are actually manifestations of your repressed traumas. Or maybe it'll just give you the baseball scores. Handmade radio. Build a better radio and the world will be to pass your door. A better one than this one, I mean. Listen. You hold the radio up to your ear. A boy's a voice asks, Gee, Pop, where'd you get all that treasure? Is it a cursed pirate horde thrown from the ruins of an ancient civilization? Haha, <laughs> no son, nothing like that. Just sound investments in perfect, cool, normal, and moral financial markets. Those voices, so eerie. You assume that a dolphin was superstitious enough to not store any padlocks on the east side of his attic. That's how you get family curses, probably. Lots of boxes, but none of them say padlocks on them. And you're not motivated to search them otherwise. Who knows what grisly things you might find. Okay, so I guess we gotta listen. Oh god. You hold the radio up to you. You hear a little girl's voice saying, Mom! Mom! A terrible ghoul stole the key to our nightstand! A woman replies, Now, dear, don't call your brother Ralphie a terrible ghoul. He probably hid the key in the potted plant in the hallway, like he always does. So we gotta look at the. No. Nope. Oh. So it's probably the unpotted plant. You dig around the dirt and find a key. So predictable, that Ralphie. You hold the radio up to your ear. A ghostly voice wails, Who stole my golden arm? Then a bo boy's voice says, Oh, come on, sis. Don't you know any other ghost stories? That's the only one you ever tell. So eerie. Uh, let's unlock this one. Covered padlock and a creepy music box. This is a creepy music box, which is to say it's a music box. If I do the radio. Okay. Well, no. What's in here? You hear? A man's voice scolding angrily. For goodness sakes, Agnes, you're obsessed. Obsessed with taping things to the backs of paintings, just like your aunt. One-eyed Calpurnia Dauphin or dolphin. I don't know how to pronounce things. You'll probably die peacefully in your sleep, just like she did. <laughs> so we gotta look... Hi, Gary. Bye, Gary. We gotta look behind, uh, paintings. If we see any. Is there anything up here? Si sound investments. Okay. Uh, no paintings in here. The radio is making noises, but that's fine. Take the first floor down. Look at the. Hmm, could this be one eyed Aunt Calperna? Considering the eye patch and the fact that the painting is labeled Calpurnia Dolphin. We got a sticky key. Seven days taped to the back of a brown painting makes one sticky. You hold the radio up to your ear. Ralphie. Why on earth do you keep flushing this fish zester down the commode? Have you even been possessed by some otherworldly or demonic force? No, Dad. I saw it would be a funny place to hide it, comes to a reply. Oh, hooray! We flushed the toilet. Oh, we can drop the key in here. The nice bath, warm bath, causes the ice to relax, and it drops the key with a grateful sigh. We got a cold key. This key is still cold to the touch, which makes you wish you held it under that water a little longer? Oh. You can unlock the key now. Padlock, gauze pan, finds tooth wax. Nothing left in the medicine cabinet except memories. Medicinal memories. So, wait, what was the... Okay, fish sisters. 
Remember, Ralphie, you must never open the door, strangers. A boy's voice replies, Okay, Mom. Because it might be a kidnapper or a murderer, right? Oh, I'm sure that would never happen. But it might be a vacuum cleaner salesman. We already have one. A salesman? Second floor, we've already done. Okay. We all need some breathing apparatus. Please be careful around the kitchen knives, Rebecca. They're very sharp. I keep them that way because counterintuitive though it may be. Dull knives actually cause more accidents. Yes, Mother, I understand. Exactly. Um. So knives sharp. What keys do we have? We have a sticky key. Maybe it might be in the garage. Can I use it inside? Clarence, I'm so grateful that our family has never suffered from supernatural curses, serial murder, demonic corruption, or plague. I agree, dear. We certainly have been fortunate, and doubtless will remain so. We already looked in the car. Uh, we got a covered padlock. We got a handsaw. Oh, jeez. Is that blood all over the- Oh, no. It's just rust. Never mind. And a key. Rusty. If rust were poetry, this key would be an ode to age and neglect. You hold the radio up to your ear. <gasps> a woman's voice scoffs. <gasps> oh my, Clarence, why are you what? lying on the floor at your workbench? Are you all right? Were you attacked by a burglar or an axe murderer? Calm down, Agnes. I'm fine. I'm just practicing changing the oil in our car. Okay. Does this unlock this? Yay. You open the cabinet and examine the stacks of fine bone china. Wait, bone china? Perhaps human bone china? I don't know. The brand mark in the bottom is a pretty well-known company, so probably not. Anyway, we find a really fancy hat. We got fine china helmet. It's entirely possible this is a gravy boat and you're just using it upside down, but don't let that stop you. Okay. How the hell are we supposed to... Breathing apparatus. Did I... How many keys do I need? Oh, it says find him in the Gatorman Fortress. Eleven radios. We've tested nine. Uh, Gatorman Hamlet. And the big noise. Eleven padlocks. Now I'm no favor her to fly. Okay. There's... Never ever open the door to salespeople. There's nothing in the fridge, no matter how many times you look. Boy, we all know that feeling, right? Nothing left. Alright. Okay. We... Did we already... We already looked... We found ten. We're just missing one more. Getting up here. It boggles the mind how and more do you have to be to build a man manor in this defenseless place. Though we have to admire the resources they marshal to do something. Ugh, get me out of here. What the hell are we still missing? Breathing apparatus. Breathing apparatus. I don't. Magical weapon attacks. Creepy music box. Rusty mug. Blood blasting. Tiara, duct tape, feather, paper hat. Shit, I don't really have a breathing thing, do I? Immune to on fire. Um. Where the hell would I get a breathing apparatus? At least the hat is shiny. I, I like that. But I guess we'll just stick with our prototype tape helmet. What the hell will we get a breathing apparatus? Egg, armband, necklace, championship belt, stench armor, gargoyle charm. Yeah, no, these are definitely not breathing apparatuses. 
keep portable radio. Is what I, what I have is a quest item. Build a radio, build a radio in the world, beat a path to your door, a better one than this one, I mean. Yes, but how do we get a breathing apparatus? Okay, let's go to the sunken box card really quick. Uh, Count Tails, powerful grit, thank you. Hey, uh, no, I. Um, hi, Pepperidge. I'm still working collecting your padlocks. Okay. I don't know where breathing apparatus is, would be. Let's go to the fucking, um, Hamlet. The shotgun toting Taylor hunt. The shotgun toting gator hunter hauls at you from behind the trees. You again! I told you to get! Didn't I give you enough money for the bus? Well, here. Gosh, thanks. I guess free money from that guy. Oh god. Gator? Oh god, where'd they go? What? I turned around for one second, they all fucking disappeared. What the what the heck did they go? Oh god, oh god. The guards stop in, stop in their tracks and start sniffing around suspiciously. They're almost turned no see getting closer. Stink put isn't an option here. Which way do you want to go and how? Toward them charge away from the recharge? Okay, so we can just wait for them to- Where the hell do you guys go? They must- this must be the second shift. Luckily, they're all facing the other way. Ambush them! Oh god. Okay. They're irritated. Stop trying to kill my sparrow. Vampire? Ooh, don't steal a chi from me. I'm gonna unleash six on fire. Oh, wait. Future me. Right, I forgot. Um. I like that there's an option if we have a ring for medical manchigo to just kill. Actually, that might be pretty good, but. Well, uh. Keterman Weed Lord? Oh my god. That is fucking hilarious. I'm gonna blast you to death. So you can't heal yourself. I'm just in for 20, Gabby for 20. 25 out of 28, 35 out of 38. This will do 35, cause two bleeding. This will do irritable. Healthy and irritable. No clobbering a spell. Sparrow. And I'm just gonna kill you. Wonderful. You dispatched the guard gators and your path forward is clear. We got a gator stick? A vicious looking sharpened branch with smaller sharp sticks stuck to it and a crude leather hand grip. Nasty business. And a swamp haunch. Onward then. Gatormen are remarkably good at building firefly- oh god. Fuck. Shielded? Oh god. What the hell is shielded is do? Can I do stench damage to you then? Or I don't want your heal its most wounded alley by throwing a nasty pastry at it. I don't want to increase your alley's stats and reduce my stats, so yeah, fuck you, you gotta go. What does this one do? A bunch of mushroom, which will have unpredictable effects. I'm just gonna get rid of you so you don't heal anyone. And then I'm just gonna get rid of you. Wonderful. Turns out those gators should be avoiding you. We got Gatorman skin pants. Not to be confused with Gatorman skin pants. Oh, there's like a dash between. Okay. These are pants made of skin and worn by a Gitterman. You're not sure what kind of skin they're made of. Swamp mushroom food. 
this swamp mushroom does not appear in any mycology checks because mycologists famously refuse to get their shoes wet. Question mark, question mark, question mark. I am the terror that stalks the swamp. Are there gonna be more of them? A dangling glob of revolting organic matter. This is apparently where the gatormen keep their billions upon billions of swarming bugs. Do you smell that? Swarm of tick, tick wasps? Oh my god. Tisk wasps will burst. I'm gonna get rid of you. Presto Tidaro. Maybe we're too OP with our, um... Oh, it's two rounds. So I don't think they can do anything until- okay. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> We've reduced the number of bugs in this terrible building by, let's say, 384. Oh, it's, yeah, it's an inf infinite fighting thing. Okay. Let's go in order. So, we'll go here. Flooded hovel, I promise I won't tell so What the heck is that? It's a sleeping Gatorman, unless he's lying about being asleep. I have no quarrel with you. A safe, hanging in an unsafe manner from the ceiling. It's got a combination lock on it, and you don't know the combination. The handle on this fridge is busted. This is gonna be a headache come lunchtime, if I open the door. No dice and no door opening either. Whoever smashed the handle wanted to keep you out, or keep something in. A magical talking sandwich, maybe. Okay, I'll put in a muscle thing. Okay, things are reduced. Seven, what? I love this so Maybe I need two muscle. Um, where the heck is two muscle? Fine, we'll do. Uh, this thing doesn't. One moxie, one muscle, and then another muscle. With great effort, you force the door open. He gained 35 XP, re released from his refrigerated cave. A cold man swarms out into the muck, gasping for air. My god, you are my savior. One more day trapped in there and I would have succumbed completely to despair. Who are you? I am Fabian, an illustrator of the natural sciences. I read steps, glittering bergs of ice, but lately my interests have taken me to these damp lags. lands. I'm in my soggy pyramid. period. How'd you get in there? I was traveling to the swamp to sketch the na native cypress, only to be caught in a net by these gator-esque men. At first they allowed me to roam within the confines of this camp, but when I shouted for help at a passing truck, I was put into a refrigerator. What truck? Oh, it hurtled through the camp like a bast out of hell. It was a boy and a girl at the wheel. I called out, stop, I'm a prisoner, take me with you. But they drove on. What makes a person do that? Where's the truck headed? Nothing north of here, I'm sure of it. North, huh? And since that driver at Largemouth Bass and Sons was, was confident the truck could only make it 11 miles at most, if you subtract from 11 the distance between this camp and the fishery, seized with the deductive before you do some quick calculations, which in your haste come out very wrong. You do them again, not rushing it this time, produce a promising lead. Do you know of a creature called Occam's Gator? Occam's Gator. Suppose, supposedly a large gator with two tails who breathes smoke from its nostrils? Oh yes, I think you're describing my mother-in-law, haha. <laughs> Okay, so you don't know. No, and I apologize. I shouldn't have said that. Melanie has always been kind to me. Okay. Every weekend, she bakes me a ball of nougat. I apologize, Melanie. Goodbye. So, if you want to leave, the way out is more or less clear. I do want to leave. That is a good guess. If we ever meet again, it would, be honor it would honor me to paint your portrait. I am in an artist, as you know. I cannot paint you right away, as I am in my soggy period. But if I conclude that work, but, or if you could become soggy, well, who knows? What if I put this on? Oh, I suppose that does make you a little soggy. Soggy enough for a minor work. One moment. You're doing it now. Fabian makes some leisurely brush strokes in a notebook. Voila, it is done. Can I see it? Fabian flips the notebook over. It's certainly the soggiest you've ever looked. The pages themselves are wet. Otherwise, it's a fair likeness. I am most obliged. I think this will really make them laugh at the Louvre. Wait, laugh? Why? Oh, do not worry about it. I hope we meet again. Okay. 
the fridge is still running. And I'm not in the fridge when we do. Why'd they gain the electricity for this? Okay, so if the kids aren't here. I want my helmet back, and I want my thing back, and I want my other thing back. I guess we'll just go with the barometer necklace. Because it's about the same. A safe hang from unsafe manner of the ceiling. Oh. Well, do not let him lie. Okay, if you say so. What would you like to do as an alternative to letting this gator man continue sleeping? Search him. You reach into the paper and carefully grope the gator man's pockets. At least you hope those are pockets. You find a scrap of paper. Safe combination. It's the combination to a gator man safe. Three numbers, too repulsive to even display here. Eureka. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna let him lie. Open it. We dial in the horrible combination open the safe. We got 590 we want meat. Score. Let's go. In this one. Flooded hovel. This seems to be where the Gatormen store all their terrible filth. Ew, it's an anvil. A forge. Presumably for hammering on terrible gator meals, metals. A rack of horrible looking weapons. You grab the most appropriate one and leave the others to rest in peace. You got a frog and fork. Gatorman sorcerers use these to gig frog for some difference. If you don't know what it means to gig a frog, look it up. Deals our mystically plus five physical damage and heals us for three HP. Oh, I think that is better than. Damn it! Oh, seven causes two bleeding, but it heals us for three HP. Damn it! We need to find more. We have a chunk of lead. A sharpening spoon and a razor blade. So I could. But I don't want to like use all the things up yet. So I guess we'll just do this. Well no. I want my melon baller back. Where'd it go? No, the melon baller. It's another refrigerator. A terrible rusty metal fridge dangles from the ceiling of this terrible rusty metal hovel. Rate it. Weird. None of this stuff is even perishable. Dried swamp meat and swamp mushroom. Hello? This gatorman seems less aggressive than is typical for these guys. Hi there. Greet human, not eat. Greet. Yes, I appreciate that. You seem a bit more relaxed than the rest of the greater folk. Yes! Everyone crazy. Don't know reason. Not belong. Leave swamp. Where will you go? Don't know. Wander? Oh, like a hobo? Hobo? What that? Uh, basically, someone who travels from place to place because they're looking for work. Or just don't have anywhere specific to be. Yes! Hobo Gator! First, though, need weapon. Defend self. You know any hobo code you could teach me? Hobo code? What that? Oh, uh, right. You don't know any yet. Um, it's like little symbols that hobos use to leave messages for other hobos. Here, I can show you some of the basic ones. You teach them the symbols for safe camp, cops here, and the increasingly rare and exciting pine windowsill. Let's offer him a weapon. Offer him. I don't want to give him my good, my good weapons, but real sturdiest broom. How about? Damn, I regret selling my other fairy skull wands. Here you can have a fishing rod. How about this fishing rod? Hmm. No thanks. Weapon weak. Need power. Okay, I'll try finding something stronger. Oh. Okay, how about a fairy skull wand? Mmm, something stronger. Okay, Jesus. Um, something stronger. I don't want to give my... Here, have a dire corn holder. Yes, very good. Love and strong. Safe now. Thank you, man. No problem. You know, there's a bunch of hobos collecting in a camp outside of Ocean City. They're pretty accepting people. I don't think they mind you joining. Plus, we handy to have some muscle around the place. Sound good. I go. He waves goodbye and stomp out, stomps out the door. Bye! Aw, that was nice. And then I think that's the last place. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I guess the amphibious truck is where the kids went. Aha! Get an eye on this. Thank you, Gabby. L B N S. There's nothing amphibious about this truck. This whole truck business feels like much ado and not about nothing. Ado is a weird word. Uh, um, 
Black smoke bills from the cow. That engine is cooked. Eat the engine. You can't eat something just because it's cooked. Eat the engine. It's far too large to eat. Eat the engine. It's just not possible to eat an engine. Eat the engine! It'd kill you even to try. Eat the engine. Gr girding yourself against the overbearing heat, you wrench open the cow and peer through the smoke, only to find that someone has beaten you to it. The engine has already been eaten. Next chance I get, I'm eating an engine. Sure. The cab door hangs limply from its hinges, pulled open. The truck has been abandoned for some time. There is nobody inside, unless they're very small and hiding. Are they? Small and hiding? No. Search the seats. Uh, newspaper left on the passenger seat is open to the classifies page. Circled are advertisements for Mr. Rat's Hotel for Working Women and the Docks. Take the paper. You don't need it. It's yesterday's news. Search in the seats. The gas tank is located underneath the driver's seat, which has the advantage of lowering the truck's center of gravity. The gas tank is empty. Is this gas tank is empty, which has a disadvantage of the truck not running working. You also notice a tiny glint in the middle. A key. Small LBNS key. Close the door. Okay, so did I maybe it opens a lock back home? So something for looking women and the docks, isn't isn't the docks exist in Boardwalk? Or am I just making- being confused? Oh. Declares at you silently. Okay, different kid. Okay, I can't because... Okay. Go back to the big moist- Oh, hello, yeah, there's people here. Hold on, are you Tom and Kathy? Um, Tom Chapman and Kathy Tracy? The boy knights nods slightly. He can see you put in the work to remember their surnames, and though you may be at cross purposes, your respect must be paid. Who wants to know? I do, isn't that obvious? I'm working for your bass fishing father. I've been looking literally everywhere for you. Really? Lots of kind of times when people say literally, they're not using it right. When people say it's literally raining on my re wet wedding, wedding day, they're not talking about actual rain. I actually do mean it, though. Oh, take a last look. We're on the next book. Bust out. Your folks back home think you're kidnapped or eaten. That's so utterly typical. They can't even conceive that someone might not want to live the same little small mouth, lar small little large mouth bass life that they do. That's not even a life. Not for us, it's not. The kind of life we want to live, it's only possible in the city. What kind of life is that? We're gonna start a business making wigs for judges. Is that a job? Are they? Are you? <laughs> Don't be rude. God, I'm sorry. But you gotta- I mean, that's like asking if cobbling is a job. Is cobbling a job? No, no, you're not gonna give me that again. I don't think judges wear wigs in this country. It's gonna be an international company. That's where the money is, if you know anything about business. I need to take you back to your parents. Hell to that, you need- to take us back like a bass needs bones. We're not going back, pal, not ever. Let your mouth bass and senses a trap. All you can ever do there is repeat the same old toxic patterns our fathers did, our grandfathers did. Debone the fish, rebone the fish, debone the fish. What's the point? It's a mindless life, and it's never gonna change. No, pal, not for us. Better to die in poverty than to live a large mouth bass, deboner, or reboner. Unfortunately, I was hired to bring it back home. Listen, friend, we're not going back. There's nothing and nobody that can make us. Please. Oh god. No! Uh, Occam Skater, you have no power there! Occam Skater? That's a real guy. Occam Skater is. Well, he's the bane of our lives, our family's lives. He has haunted us, tortured us before I was even bo born. Can he be reasoned with? Back! Did you say back? Miserable back. We, we will be miserable if we go back. The gator sneers. To your surprise, the beast apparently has no intention of killing or eating the children, but it means to return them home to largemouth bass and sons. But why? Why would it care? You want them to be miserable? Oh yes, miserable back. I don't know what Occam's gator wants except our whole family be miserable. I don't know why Elsie torments us. What's your problem? Misery. You just want to cause misery. Bass misery. To largemouth bass and sons specifically. Hmm. Why exactly? God. What? God. Misery God. You have a God that wants to cause misery to largemouth bass and sons? Amen. What's your God's name? Occam's Gator. Now you leave these kids alone. 
Thank you, but there's no shaking Occam Skater when he's got his mindset to a thing. Mindset. There's gotta be a way we can work this out. Violence. Apart from that. Violence misery. I'm gonna change his mind. The monster abides by his own obscure ethos. Perhaps he can outthink him. If Tom and Kathy will... If you let him go, he'll cause more misery to their families. I draw Fast and Sons is totally reliant on these children to profit their failing company. The whole thing is a joke. Without Tom and Kathy, it'll all slide slowly but irrevocably in a long, painful era of decline over which looms the grim terminus of business death. That's that's true. Occam's Gator seems to be giving them some thought. Just something to consider. A slow smile creeps a up across Occam's Gator's face and keeps on growing until it's made a complete ring around its head. Is that a yes? Can you teach me how to do that? I don't know what to say. Nobody ever stood up to that thing before. Dad even tried giving me a cut of the business to leave us alone. You mean what he said, though? You think the business will fail without us? Yeah, probably. Huh, we're doing the right thing. If I was 100% sure of that when we left, I'm now I'm now 98% sure, which is still, that's still very high. Yeah, that's pretty high. Well, thanks, stranger, anyway. For getting octopus, take a height. Except the mean Anton. I know it's not much, but oh, would you want these? Free sample? Judge's wig. Enjoy that. Reminds you, don't combine with the jury's wig and the executioner's wig. Nobody should have that much power. Come on, though. Are you still trying to take us back to Large Mouse Vass? I'd still very much like to do that. Oh, get out of here. We're not gonna do that. No, no way. If this run in with Occam's Gator has taught me anything, it's that life's too short and it's time for Kathy and I to leave home and write our own story. I thought that's what you were doing from the beginning. Before I was 100% sure this was a good idea, now I'm 101% sure. Me too. Goodbye then. It's been a eventful wait for the bus. Okay. I guess we gotta tell the parents. A flash of light cuts through the trees. The glare passes, and then you see it poking out its head above the canopy as a telescope. Why, you fancy a telescope ever since you were a child. You press your nose to the window of the telescope shop for hours until the proprietor would run out and threaten a tender glutes with a tripod. And I still want a telescope. Ain't waited long enough. Go and get your telescope. Telescope in a treehouse? Oh, I'll keep going where I'm going. Well, um. Hi. Don't you dare show your face around here. You did her, now Kathy's locked. I received a telegram for her, and now she's throwing her life away chasing the judge wig dreams of youth. Occam's Gator is real. Yeah, I know. Are you concerned about the future of the business without Kathy? We'll suffer the setback, as we've always done. But I plan to reband a largemouth bass and sons and daughter will have to be put on hold. A pity. The name rolls off the tongue, which would be appropriate, That's as that's how we slide the fish's bones out. Sorry about your daughter. I only hope she'll re realize this mistake she's made. Her mother always told her, don't throw away your life for a man like I did. Meaning you? Huh? Now that I mention it, you I wonder. I'll be on my way. Huh? Just visiting? I'm sure when you smell the large mouth bass is addictive. Fuck, now I can't s Well, it's fine. When she sees you, the cat, le cat leaps into your arms and licks your cheek with the vigor and sloppiness of an animal ten times her size. Well, hey girl, what's your name? The cat nods at its collar. Scylla, it says. Scylla, huh? What was that big lick for? The cat nods at the other side of the collar. It says, you didn't go against the family. New cat unlocked. You can now pet her to give a, get a boon. What boon do you give? 20% meat drops? I'll keep my current boon. Go clean up. Fuck you. I'm eating a sandwich. Ah, the sandwich smacks of something foul and deeply wrong. As if the food had rotted, rotted itself to punish your minor transgression. It reminds you of the story of your friend Eve, who ate a forbidden window display sandwich and was cast out from the Garden of Eating restaurant. <laughs> Begin an original sandwich. Like Eve, you have tasted the a forbidden sandwich and must face the consequences. Oh my god. Can we unlock this? The door fit key sits fits snugly in the lock. So snugly, can't get it out, in fact, but does its job nonetheless. The Astera bedding testifies to the Tracy family's rigorous ask us I can't pronounce that name. One must purge body and mind of all comfort and distraction to achieve the hyper-focus of a bass fisherman. Secret candies? A bass fisherman should not be vulnerable to such temptations. Times are tough at the largemouth bass and pies and pills are in short supply. 
The Spartan mattresses hold no secrets. We got 16 teeth? New smile star kit? Just sell them, I guess? Tooth fairies skip the swamp for a while. A navy blue slicker is the sole resident of the coat rack. Fierce rummaging yields a letter in the diary pocket. The envelope appears unopened. We got Kathy's letter. A letter from Kathy Tracy, addressed only to Dad. The post office will never be able to deliver that. Lodge from a bath. Bass eyes peek through the slots in the lockers. You're not supposed to be in this room. It's better if Adam doesn't see you leave through the store. Better for whom? Better for you. Okay. Hello, just visiting. I should warn you. The smell of the lunch with bass is addictive. I found these teeth under pill. Yes, those are mine. You believe in the tooth fairy? No. I ate your sandwich. You don't. No, you didn't. The one in the refrigerator is a decoy. Nobody has ever found the real thing. I'll be on my way. Don't I? Oh, what about the quest item? The envelope isn't sealed. You slide it open with Eve. Ease. Dad, all anyone cares about in this family is a large mouth bass. Well, I'm sick of it. Ain't I a person? Ain't I deserving of being cared about too? I'm leaving, Dad, for a place where dreams are possible. You ain't ever gonna find me because you don't know where that is. Love, Kathy. P.S. Hi to Mom. Okay. Um, you need to see this. Adam Tra Tracy pours over the letter. His brow seeking into Dero deeper furrows with each line. Ain't never, ain't I? My friend, those are the vulgar contractions of Occam's Gator. I didn't give Kathy a copy of Jane Eyre to have her contracted have her contracted properly. No, this letter is an obvious ruse, friend. Occam's clumsy attempt to throw us off the scent. Face it, Tiger, your daughter ran away from home. I meant to see any evidence of that. I'd be on my way. Weird. Guard Izzy suspiciously. Keep your nose clean. Ah, the fish today. Thanks, Cersei. This way, this about the guard. Uh, large mouth blank. Uh, long can large mouth bass salute. She knows where to find me. She'll come back. I found the truck. Where? Really? She alright? Does she need anything? She's out of gas and something ate the engine. Rats, I don't know where I'll find a new engine. I really need that truck back. I left an egg sandwich on the passenger seat. I'm afraid by now the egg will hatch. Take it easy. Me too. Um. Can I pet the cat? Ah. But as you approach, the cat raises a quizzical eyebrow. I know what you're talking about. I certainly didn't have anything to do with helping Tom Chapman and Tr Kathy Tracy flee their largemouth bass fishing fathers. The cat only chuckles in response. What's your name, girl? The cat points to his collar. Charbidus. Oh, then you even need to ask, I guess. We can now pet her to receive a boon. Uh, 20% of item drops. I'm gonna keep my current boon. H Actually, yeah. Fuck you guys. Too late, friend. Tom's gone. I received a telegram from him with news that he's in the big sea, thriving as the head of his own business, manufacturing wigs for judges. Wait, he's already set up business? It's already thriving? Yes, it's fast, I know, but widges judges' wigs are a gold mine. I can't tell that you don't have business instincts or you need to recognize that right away. Can I still get that fishing rod? I don't want the rod anymore. When I got that telegram from Rod Tom, I threw it into the sea. Let the fishies have it. I figured they'll use it to destroy each other and we'll swoop in to pick up the pieces. Occam's Gator is real. I saw him. In the shower? Yes. Hmm? No? Ah. It's just that that's mostly where I see him. Uh, Tom's locker is locked. Wouldn't be much of a... Do you have the key, though? Sorry about your son. Do you know I'm actually proud of him? I always thought he was a dreamer. I never realized he had those killer instincts for business. Ah, yes, he's a good sort. Tom, maybe I've been unfair from him. Are you worried about the future of the business without Tom? The session is only an issue if I die. Wouldn't you agree? And that's far from inevitable, especially if I'm just a good helmet. Be seeing you. Well, yeah. Fuck you guys. We need a crowbar, I guess. Bones. Tartak. Bones. Well, take it easy. Is there... I never heard a fly. I guess this quest is somewhat completed. At least we can pet the fish now. Okay. Um, let's go to the frog bog. 
You spot a shadow orb hovering around and decide to follow it deeper in the swamp. That might seem like a bad plan, but considering the old stories about people following will-o'-the-wisps and becoming lost in the swamp forever, but a will-o'-the-wisp is a floating ball of light, and this is the opposite of that. So, logically, this is actually a very good plan, except for how it leads you right into a group of tentacle shadow monsters. Oh yeah. I put you on fire. God, the cicadas are just fucking going crazy with it. I'm just gonna spot her, y'all, because Alcabri. Oh, yeah, you're good. You're dead. You won. The goodness of your planet has now been proven. QED. Frog bog. I love frogs. Hello, froggies. They're so cute. I love froggies. Rabbit. The frogs are talking. Buddy. Hey. Hey. Buddy. Hey. Rivet. Speak to the frogs. You clear your throat. There was a, a frog in it. Haha. <laughs> Maybe they don't use that joke when talking to the frogs, so. Uh, hello, frogs. Buddy. Not. Ribbit. Not. Ribbit. Frogs. Humans. Frogs. Not. Humans. Not. Ribbit. Frogs. Ribbit. Ribbit. Talking frogs were not on your list of expectations for the day. You just the frogs. Again. Oh, wait, are you saying you're humans, not frogs? Right. Yes. Ribbit. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. Right. Ribbit. Speak to them. You think about what it, was like, what it would be like to be trapped in a frog's body. After a few seconds, you stop thinking about it because you don't like thinking about things that fill you with harrowing ex existential angst. How'd this happen? God. Cory. Ancient. Cave. Cory. God. God. Statue. Cory. Statue. Curse. Frog, 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 statue, Cory, statue, God, God. You struggle to make sense of the cacophony. It's kind of hard to understand you with everyone talking all at once. Could you all stop talking except for one frog? Frog, share, single, all, share, mind, frogs, frogs, share, share, single, frogs, share, frogs, all, share. All frogs share a single mind. Wow, that's incredible. This changes er Actually, you can't think of any significant consequences of what you just learned. You try to remember the last time you interacted with a specific frog as an individual, and it was... Uh-oh. That biology class. Probably best not to bring that up. What's that like for you? Share. Gross. Gross. The worst. Gross. Sucks. Awful. Awful. Sucks. Hate it. Hate it. Awful. Hate it. Sucks. Sucks. Huh, yeah, that's it. What about what I expect? Is there some way I can help you? One of the larger frogs hops up to you and coughs loudly. A shiny green object flies out of its mouth and sinks into the water. Grab it. You roll up your sleeve and plunge your hands in the nasty water. Your fingers find a hard object, which turns out to be, wow, shiny, a gleaming emerald. This is the most beautiful thing a frog has ever barfed at you. <laughs> you turn back to the frog. Um... What should I do with this? A second frog approaches and belches up a soggy piece of paper. You decide to just look at it instead of touching it with your hand. It appears to be a shipping label from a nearby quarry. Hame quarry. Hmm. Luck. Awful. Good. Luck. 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 Good. 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 Ribbit. You should probably go to Haim quarry and figure out to do that emerald. We're gonna wander a bit until the episode's over. Ooh. Gabby has found some mushrooms with bright red spots and is picking them. Gabby, I think those are poisonous. Oh yes, very poison you. But Gabby doesn't know about poisons yet. He, why you can object to this? Gabby crams the toy stools into her mouth and eats them. Blah. This is the an opposite of delicious. But Gabby knows about poisons now, so that's worth a while. Gabby's healing spores also now cure poison. Ah, thanks, Gabby. A radio transmission cuts through the thick swamp air, a series of beeps and tones of varying length and pitch. Random noise, or perhaps, or some coded message, scry pattern and sounds. Why it's most code? And a distress call. As you listen further, you learn a frog has swallowed a shortwave radio and now suffers intestinal trouble. You locate the frog and leave her relieve him in a manner best unexplained. <laughs> 9 XP. You cra catch a whiff of burnt rubber and see a column of smoke drifting into the sky nearby. As you get closer to the site, you see that a small airplane has crashed into the mud, or perhaps splatted or glorped into the mud. <laughs> Gorp. I want to go to the abandoned truck because I want to know if there's an egg sandwich still over there. 
Uh, here's a grizzly sight. The carcass of some kind of swamp animal, covered in huge ticks. Oh no, wait. Some of them are buzzing around the air. Are they actually swaps? S wasps? Why did I read that as swaps? What? Well, haha. <laughs> Turns out both things can be true. There are tick wasps, which are notable for being the only insect that can stab you at both ends. I guess we have to fight them. Hello. Oh god. I'm gonna put them on fire. What are- th Me Mega mosquitoes. Oh my god. Um, I'm gonna splatter them all. Because I think it's funny. Uh, six, fifteen, fifteen. I'm just gonna get rid of the mega mosquitoes. P, you have less on fire, so you're gonna get killed. And I think, well, well, other Gary can just yeah. This is fine. You won. Hopefully, you also win your upcoming nightmares. We got a wasp clasp. This tick wasp rigor mortis has created a convenient way to attach it to your lapel. Nice. Um. Is there any- You detect the faint scent of something eggy in the air, but see no sign of its source. Aww. Okay. Just nothing here. Um, I guess we'll make our way to the quarry, but like, just stay there. The shotgun toting gator hunter hollers at you from the- Thank you for money. He's just giving us free money. Uh, hello? Let's see, I wanna... Can I please upgrade my book all the way? It keeps going! It just keeps going! You find an old medicine show wagon overturned in the swamp. Most of its contents have long since hazardously dissolved into the local ecosystem. But there's probably s some stuff left. A few damp toiletries and even damper medicaments. Wonderful. A healthy haul. All of a sudden, you hear a gatorman screaming wildly to your left. Ah! And just as suddenly, another gatorman starts screaming to your right. What the? You hear an a angry smell behind you and turn around. Another gatorman! Oh no! Oh yes. And when you hear someone say, uh, behind you, so you turn and run again. There's another gatorman. You're surrounded. Well, crap. Stand very still and I hope they leave. Let's just fight them. Oh my god, you have a shield? Can you smell that? Which one is a scream mouth? Oh, I guess this one. 28? Oh, good drain. Thank you. Actually, I'm just gonna use my hot- Oh, that's 8 hot damage? Okay. Okay, um, do you, you found a belch, you plan to have a bunch of mushroom, you plan to clobber future me. I'm gonna get rid of you. Bask in my aroma, thank you. Um, this is still 8 hot damage, so that's pretty cool. I'm gonna get you chunked down, I'm gonna set you on- I'm gonna kill you to death. Gabby, um, can smack you. Not my bird! Okay, uh, five, twenty-five. Presto Tadaro! Presto Tadaro again, because that guy's almost dead. And then you're pretty much dead. Okay. Woohoo. 
Only two turns. He won. Jeez. Maybe that'll teach him not to sneak up on a person like that. Ooh, gator cheese. And you're gonna choose not to interrogate the biological means by which the stuff is produced. We can bring that to our rat friend. Okay. We are gonna end this episode right here. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Make sure you take care of yourself. Get enough food, get enough water, get enough rest. And just be kind to yourself in general because you deserve it. Also, tell somebody you love them because you really may not know how much they need it. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!